Hi there, I'm Linda and this is Hutton's Valley Permaculture. The more I grow my own food, the more my mindset changes from one of what would I like to eat to what do I have to eat. In today's video, we're going to harvest some of the volunteers in the garden before they go to seed and volunteer again and take them to the kitchen and I'll show you what I'm learning to do with them all. I'm going to be doing two recipes today. The first is a vegetable stock paste, which I usually make in summer with all the summer veg, but I'm running out. So today I'm going to make the most of all the wonderful volunteers in the garden. The second recipe I'm going to do is a soup. Collie is abundant, I've got fennel and I've got leeks in abundance, so that's the second recipe I'm going to do. And finally, I've got so much leek in the garden that I've got to do something with it. It's all going to go to seed and spread those seeds around again. So I'm going to harvest a lot of those and I'm just going to simply dehydrate that to have in the cupboard as a flavouring agent throughout the year. First up, we're going to grab some of this celery. The celery did volunteer in the garden and then for a number of these plants, I transplanted them and moved them to better locations. Now, the snails do get into them a bit, so they are kind of eaten, but it's kind of fairly perfect for the recipe I've got in mind. This recipe is a great way to use up old veg. I mean, perhaps that one can just go to the chickens or the compost but a lot of this that's imperfect is just perfect for making your own stock paste okay the recipe calls for about 200 gram of celery so I reckon that's about enough and I will be using some of the celery leaves in the recipe as well Usually I would put basil in and sage, but at the moment they're certainly not in abundance. So I'll be substituting in some of these leaves. Just hiding beyond the celery, I've got a big patch of flat leaf parsley. So the recipe calls for a good handful of that. So I'll drag in that. Now that just all volunteered from one plant and there's a bit of curly leaf parsley hiding in there as well. My recipe for the stock paste calls for two carrots but these are getting pretty small so I'll be grabbing quite a few and throwing them in. Certainly a good way to use up an odd bunch. We could even just use some of these uh, greens from the carrots as part of the flavouring in our stock paste too since we don't have the basil or the sage. Next up is a visit to my fennel patch. These are about to go to seed and I will leave some plants to go to seed. Uh, the bees love the flowers and it's really lovely in the garden. Um, but some of these bulbs are a perfect size for harvesting and enjoying right now. And it's a good idea to get them before they kind of waste away. So you can see they really, really need to be harvested. So we're definitely not going to waste them and we're not going to waste some of these fronds because again that might be great flavour in the stock paste. We'll be using the fennel in the stock paste and the soup so I'll be grabbing a few for that. Always good to have the chickens next door. Now I still have a couple of cauliflower coming along, just your traditional white cauliflower. Although I've missed the opportunity for some other. This was hit with a bit of frost and just slug and snail pressure, I think. And I missed that one too. I did have a lot of cauliflower to deal with for a little while and I kind of just forgot about these guys. So for the soup, we're returning to my hybrid plants. This plant is huge and all of this is just going to be perfect both for in the stock paste and in the soup. So I'm going to take quite a lot of these and it'll be a more green soup than a white soup. Okay, just the one veg left to harvest and that's my leeks. I'm going to take all four of these leeks because I want to be planting this garden into bolotti beans. And then I've got a patch of leeks in a pathway that I've been meaning to move on for quite some time. 
these leaks in the pathway are not very big but they are soon to be going to seed again and I really don't want them. They're next to where I hope to plant my tomatoes once again. So I'm going to move them on and they will be perfect in any of the recipes or even the dehydrated um, leeks that I'm going to do regardless of the size. First up, I'm just going to grab these ones which aren't in very deep but I still have to be careful to not waste any of it and cut too uh, high up. Now I can use the whole plant. Often, you know, we cut all of this green off, but that'll be fine dehydrated and used as flavoring. It'll be fine in the stock placed and it will be fine in my soup. Okay. Well, the path's all clear now and my veggie garden's ready for the Bellotti beans. And it's given me a huge pile of leeks. Now this is all great flavor. What I'm going to do is with the bigger ones, I'm just going to slice those up and dehydrate them as is. And with the smaller ones, I'll just be whizzing these all up in my food processor, dehydrating them as a bit of a paste and then processing them again into a powder. So it's really quick and easy to add that flavor into soups, stews, your omelets, sort of anything really. So it's a great way to use all this abundance that has just chosen to grow in my garden. I think that's about all we need. We'll just get this into the kitchen and get started. First up, we're gonna work on the stock paste. So I'm gonna sort through all this, get out what we need and get it washed. Now I'm not using all of the celery leaves, but certainly some of them to give a bit of added flavor. Now this is the pile of herbs that I'm going to be adding. And the herbs actually consist of some of the fennel leaves, some of the carrot tops, celery tops, and of course the flat leaf parsley that I've grabbed as well. Now with the, the leek, these pieces are pretty to go, good to go in as is, but I'll certainly be sort of opening up these leafy parts and giving them a much better rinse. With the bulky veg, I will kind of just give it a bit of a chop as I go, just so I can fit it all in. Now we can add some more. And just as the leek often needs extra cleaning, you've just got to keep an eye on your fennel as well. Anywhere your little bugs, snails and slugs can get in. It's a great way to use up these dodgy looking carrots. Sometimes it needs a bit of a stir around to really kind of chop it up properly. Ah, that's looking better. Now to get everything else in. And I like to get the herbs all pretty chopped up before adding to the mix as well. does need a bit of a stir. 
Okay, all right, we're ready to proceed with the recipe now that that's all chopped up. Now to add the rest of the ingredients, I'm just going to use some of my fermented garlic in there. A tablespoon of olive oil and 150 gram of rock salt. Now I'm using a sea salt. Okay, with all that in, we can get it cooking now, which is for 20 minutes. 120 on speed. One. That's finished cooking now. Now we just need to whiz that up for a minute to finish it off. Pretty hot in there. Well, that is uh, green goodness. We've just got to pack it into some jars now. I'll wait till it cools down a little bit and just put it into clean jars. Now that we've got our stock paste made, I'm going to use some of that in the fennel, leek and cauliflower soup. I've got my veg all washed, the fennel, leek and collie. I am going to add some of my fermented garlic. You can add some beef or chicken stock or if you want to keep it vegetarian, just add a little bit of water because your flavour will come from this stock paste that's just been made. First up, we're going to whiz up the leek and then saute that for about three minutes just to get some flavours caramelising. I'll just add a little bit of olive oil to that. So I'm just going to saute that for three minutes. I forgot to whiz it up before sautéing, so I'm just going to sauté that for a little bit longer just to make sure that we've got those flavours developed a bit more. While that's sautéing, you just prepare the rest of your veg. I'm just going to chop this up very roughly before adding it in to my Thermomix. After sautéing the leek, I'm just going to add the, the rest of my chopped up veg and give that a bit of a whiz to get it into little pieces. And to that, I'm going to add some ground pepper just a teaspoon of my garlic paste and I am going to add about a tablespoon, about a heap tablespoon of this stock paste. Now one tablespoon you would use with 500 gram of water as a flavouring. Now it is quite a salty paste and that's what keeps it preserved but when adding it to your 500 gram of water or whatever liquid you're adding in that will dilute it. I won't add any more salt in until the end when I can taste it and see if it needs more seasoning. And finally, add in the water or stock if you're using stock. And I kind of just keep it down below maximum. So it was about a litre, I suppose. So in theory, I could add a bit more of this to make it two tablespoons if I'm adding a litre of water. Pop that on and we're just going to cook that for 20 minutes on about 100 and on speed 1 to keep it stirring. Then to finish off we just have to blend that for a minute until it's smooth. Now at this point you could add in some coconut milk or cream or coconut milk powder or a bit of cream or you know if you do dairy just to, to make it a, a bit creamier but I'm out of all of that at the moment so I'm just going to have what I'm going to call a green veggie soup and just puree that and there we are our green veggie soup fennel, collie and leek. Now for the taste test, which I probably should have done before pouring it out into my bowl in case it does need a little bit more seasoning, but I'm anticipating it will be pretty good. That stock paste has got plenty of salt in it and I certainly gave it a whack of pepper. Mmm, yeah. Perfect cauliflower, fennel and leek soup. It's a really lovely flavour 
And having that stock paste with all those flavors in it as well really accentuates the flavor. It's really beautiful. And you can certainly make it a lot more creamy with adding in some cream or coconut milk or coconut um, cream. Definitely recommend giving this recipe a try. Now we can move on to the rest of the legs. With the large legs, I'm going to clean them up and then just slice them up and dehydrate them as is. Now that's a great way to be able to just add leek flavour into dishes down the track uh, quick and easily. And I think if you can make the most of your garden abundance, um, put it into ways that you're going to easily use, uh, then it's a great way to add extra flavour and extra nutrition to all your future dishes. Once my leeks all clean, I'm just going to slice it up. Uh, you could do this in a food processor with a slicer, but um, I can't be bothered getting it out and I don't mind just going through and slicing it all up. Fairly even pieces so that they dehydrate at the same rate. And then just spread out on your dehydrated trays. To the dehydrator and the last thing I'm going to do with some of the rest of the, the leeks is I'm just going to whisk them up into a paste using my food processor and then dehydrate them like that. Although that one looks too good to be whizzed up I might put that in the fridge and use it um, in a different recipe, I reckon. Yeah, that's good. And I'm just going to spread that around on my silicon sheet. The thinner you get it, the quicker it will just dehydrate. And we'll just pop those in the dehydrator as well. In now, I'll be putting it in at 52 degrees and for eight hours and adjusting if needed. We have been drying for around eight, nine hours and I think we are done. You can see it's all quite crispy now. Okay, what I'm going to do with these is just pop them into some jars so that I can grab them out whenever I need to add a bit of leek flavour to some dishes. I'm going to just see if I can tip this onto this baking sheet. I do have a silicon sheet that I often use, but it's damp at the moment, so I don't want to introduce any moisture to my leeks. And from there, I should be able to get it into my jars. Now I don't mind sort of scrunching that down a little bit. Oh well, it did a pretty good job, a little bit everywhere. Just make sure your container is airtight and just make sure you make a note of what it is. And um, what's the date? It's the September 23. And this is no longer pasta sauce. And we've got this that's also quite crunchy. So that's all ready to be powdered. Once it's all been pulverised, I just store this sort of thing in an airtight jar. Now our beautiful basket of veg has now turned into mostly future flavour. The soup is nearly all gone, but if I'd made a double batch, I could have frozen some of that for the future. But the stock paste is 
great for making future soups and I'll often um, put that in stews or risottos or other things where I need a burst of flavour. I do keep that in the refrigerator. Uh, it does have plenty of salt in it to preserve it but the fridge is the place for it. These will just be kept in the pantry um, until I need them and they will rehydrate really easily by just throwing it into you know your soups and stews and you can just add a burst of leek flavour into an omelette or whatever um, you think you need it. You could also use this powder to make a salt. You could just add the salt into it and make a, a leek salt, just like sort of your onion salts or your garlic salts would be wonderful with that as well. Check out the description for the recipes for both the soup and the stock paste. Just remember with the stock paste, if you do have different veg, you can use it. Just keep your proportions the same so that the salt ratio is the same um, in the stock paste. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. It's really important to make the most of what you're growing and to enjoy it and I'm learning new ways to use different veg that I haven't used before. Please let me know in the comments if you've got some ideas for leeks and cauliflower and fennel. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. Thanks so much for watching and bye for now.